Oh yeah? Okay, this is video number four, and we're going to talk about the header menu, or the header menu ribbon. Okay, let's go over to our trading station, and we're going to talk about this section at the top here. Alright, so, let's just get started. Alright, here we can open up a new chart, if we want to. We can open up another one that we saved previously offline, and I believe you can actually use the Excel spreadsheet that you can save, which is here. Alright, there's a profiles area that you don't even need to worry about, so completely ignore that. What um, Open the previously deleted tab files, which are these down the bottom, so I can go ahead and maybe right click on there, click on close, and then come back up the file, open deleted, and there it is there, so I can open it back up again. Alright, um, what else do we have? Open up a new account or log in. Now normally when you open you up your account for the first time, you've logged in, you set everything up and then you've closed the trading station down, you come back the next day and when you load it up again, by default we will log back into that account again. If it doesn't for you, then most likely there is some kind of um, problem with your installation. So my recommendation is if you're having problems where you can't save um, your previous setups, because even when you close the trading station down, these indicators will stay on the charts and these tabs will stay where they are they'll stay on the same time frames everything basically saves all right its previous state all right and it will return to that previous state when you load it up again including the login now if none of that happens then you need to uninstall it okay turn off your firewall okay and then reinstall it again and you shouldn't have a problems now you may remember i said go back um when you into video number 1 about saving your login info. Well, this is the very reason why you would need to save that information amongst others. All right, like you, you know, you might need to format your hard drive or reinstall or something. So I would actually put those kind of sensitive information on a flash drive, on a thumb drive, or on a USB drive. Okay, so you can take it around with you wherever you need to go. All right, so you've always got it. All right. <clears throat> so okay, so the view. Uh, we've got the languages, you can change the languages if you want to, we've got the toolbar section, the toolbar section here, I mean if I click on that there you'll see this little section here have just um, been removed, and if it doesn't look like mine, and you go, oh I wonder where that went, and you get confused and frustrated wondering where it was, and you know, so go back to the view toolbar section, go back and click on it again and it'll pop back, alright, so I can go view again, and then go to customize if I want to, and I can customize the sections on there that I want to keep on there as well. All right. Um, you got the market watch, which is oh, that's just disappeared. So that's obviously that. All right. So there's the market watch. Actually, it's even labelled there for you to make it even easier for you to recognise. All right. I was just messing with you. There's the data window there as well. Now the data window can come in handy when you're using certain strategies um, and to really pinpoint and focus on some proper price action and targets and stuff like that. I right, also give you the parameters of the any indicators that are on there as well, the volume, what the close was, the high. I'll actually show you some strategies that you can actually use this data window to predict um, a movement in the in the currencies and it's a very interesting one that I think would pay for its course more more, to, more than ten times over. Alright, but we'll get that into that into the later modules, alright? Um, what else do we have? Right, yeah, so if you want to basically remove all of these, you can go ahead and just, obviously, just click away from them, okay? So this gives you a bit more real estate to look at the charts, which is always a good thing, okay? You don't necessarily need to um, have all of these open. It's always best to have a nice full screen to work with, okay? Um, so when you want to go ahead and open this kind of tr um, like trade-off of this chart, you can go back to this little th button here, which is the market watch. All right, but we'll talk about that a bit again. But this section is the market watch. We can go over here and then choose the trade that we want, and then open up, open it up. All right. So it's all pretty simple stuff. Okay. So we've got the insert section, the, the indicators. This is another way how you can apply indicators to the chart that you're actually um, viewing. At the moment, we're on the um, British pound versus the USD on the um, four-hour time frame. So I can go ahead and add an average true range on there. The properties box comes up, click OK, and it gets supplied to the chart. All right. Um, I can add line studies to it if I want, channels, the GAN, Fibonacci, shapes, arrows. Shapes can be used to you know, um, pinpoint breakout areas or demand and supply levels. 
um, eclipses could be used for you know marking a, a predicted um, take profit price um, if you want to do paper trading Andrew's pitchfork um, cycle lines and you can add some text and labels and stuff like that onto the chart to remind yourself of certain areas in the market um, you got the indicators list and here you can go ahead and remove the indicator if you want to the other way you can actually remove the indicator is just simply hovering over the indicator itself you've got to be very precise with it and you can either double click on it to change the parameters or you can right click on it and actually delete the indicator there okay or you can go into the um, the properties of that indicator as well and change them around as needed okay all right so what else do we got um, the bar chart which is what we're seeing right now normally by default you will see the candlesticks the Japanese candlesticks show up all right so this is just another way of actually trading you can actually use this to find um, pivot high pivot low breakouts um, reversal breakouts uh, all different kinds of strategies that I'll show you later on all right inside bars outside bars pin bars and what have you okay so here we can change the time frames we're currently on the four hour time frame h4 we can go to the one hour time frame if we want to all right um, grid you can take the grid off some people prefer to trade like that works better for them you can add the volumes on there as well which gives you an idea of how much is being pushed into the market all right um, you know, and you can take the auto scroll off the auto scroll is basically every time every hour because we're on the one hour time frame so for every hour that goes by it this will move the chart to the left automatically okay um, we have the chart shift as well we we'll click on that and this actually moves the chart to the left so this gives us a little bit more working room to give us kind of like projections where we might feel that the currency pairs will end up all right we can zoom in zoom out step by step and properties you can go into and change the the, you know, the backgrounds and stuff we'll get into that in a little bit in, in a template section all right you can also create a new order from this area as well so if you're on this time frame it's going to automatically default to this particular time frame and currency pair that we're actually on all right uh, let's take a look we got the history center global variables meta, meta quotes language editor that I showed you before all right, and then you got the option section. You got all of this information all here, and I'll, we'll get into that maybe in a little bit later. All right, um, the windows you don't really use this, and the help now the help topics. This is um, really important. There's some you might have some questions about um, how to open a buy stop or sell stop or sell limit or buy limit. Just basically go to this um, search section here and type in um, set up buy stop okay and um, the ones that, the section that you're looking for placing pending orders I believe here it is and it's a very well written um, article but you will need to oh that's not the one this is one my, my bad trading order types now this is the well, is a well written article it's got images in it as well to give you an idea all right so you might need to read through this about three or four times I certainly had to to get an understanding of what it was saying because it does get quite confusing so but we will get into buy limits and buy stops and sell limits and sell stops um, in future videos when we go ahead and start applying trades okay all right so yeah so there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's basically the file menu all right so in the next video um, we're going to talk about all of these shortcut icons as well all right so until then I'll see you very soon bye for now